to our Christmas extravaganza. I'm so excited for everyone that is here, both on the YouTube here. So welcome, uh, I see Raymond, Jack, Terry, Eugene, Arthur, Peg, Joel, Ruth, so welcome. We got a really special guest for us today. Um, actually, I'm gonna close out, let me quit Safari here because it gives me some issues here. Give me a thumbs up if you can see and hear me. All right, give me a thumbs up. All right, good. Have to make sure the microphone's on and everything's going well. So, all right, good to see you all. Uh, this is, uh, what day is this? We started a week ago, if you remember, with all the, um, all the brands. I don't remember, look at the camera, I keep telling myself, instead of looking at, at the computer screen. Um, but last week, remember, we started with all the brands we're on. And we, uh, and we had Cordoba, Paul Harris came on for Cordoba. And we are giving away eight, eight ukuleles. Okay, if you all remember that, um, Koloha, Kanalea, Romero's Creations, Kala, Ohana, Cordoba, Enya, and Flight have all donated uh, a ukulele for this. Make sure to sign up. If you haven't, hopefully you have, ukulelepros.com slash Christmas. And we're doing a mix of artists, live artists here on for each brand and then tutorials. So we've had a busy week. We had a busy week this week with uh, Victoria from Flight on Monday. Kimo Hussey, just to ask Kimo Hussey, <laughs> he wasn't representing any brands at all. And by the way, I have the new, uh, it's all tuned up for me. You turned it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Look at this. Natalie, I don't know if you've seen these yet. The uh, new Bob Marley guild just came in. Boom. All right. So these literally just, just came in. Was that so the Bob Marley Gills just came in? This was a um, this is a replica of the actual guitar that Bob Marley played. It was like his his home guitar. It's a guitar that he did a lot of writing on and a little practicing on at his house. So um, Guild got the rights to replicate that guitar that he has. This one is called the um, hold on, don't get old, people, don't get old. The A20, the A20, and I think, I think the one, yeah, I don't remember the exact model, the one he had, what it was, but uh, anyway, this is very cool. These literally just came in, and you know I'll be doing a, a tutorial on these. These are also, um, I know, I know Cordoba's worked really close with Bob Marley's family. They're going to be planting a tree uh, over in uh, in Jamaica in honor of Bob Marley and also they're donating a bunch of these instruments to some music schools back there in Jamaica as well so very very cool um very very cool uke I mean you huge uke sounds great sounds great all right that's that's I'm not I'm not even warmed up but anyway Natalie will will, will be doing some more playing uh, it's a full size. Yeah, I mean, it's a full acoustic guitar. I mean, I don't think it's jumbo. It's not a jumbo size, but yeah, it's a, it's a guitar. <laughs> All right. Let me, I got to go and I got to open up my YouTube here to make sure I can see any comments. So what do y'all think of this Bob Marley uh, guitar here that, that we got that just came in? This again is the A20 that just came in. So I'm excited. I think I got a couple of them here. All right. Let me go to my chat here real quick. Where do I get my live here? I'll, I'll, I'll just go here. All right, so make sure to sign up for this ukulelepros.com slash Christmas. I'm really excited to have Natalie Gelman here. Um, we'll talk about her career a little bit, and uh, you'll hear some playing uh, from her, and I'm going to bring her on in just, just a minute. Now, because once everything gets going, uh, things can, will kind of get a little crazy, uh, and I'll forget stuff. So in honor of Cordoba and Guild, uh, just today, and my team will put stuff in both chats in, in honor of these two brands and Natalie uh, as well. We're going to do a 10% off. Actually, this one I don't think is on the store yet. 10% off the Guild guitars that we do have. We both have some of the imported lines and the USA made Guild guitars. So all those 10% off today only. And then 20%. Yeah, you heard me right. 
20% off all Cordoba ukuleles, right? I guess there's, there's some mini guitars too, mini guitar. Cordoba has some mini guitars that we carry and actually some regular guitars too. So that's just today only. And again, that's in honor of Cordoba and Natalie being here. So take advantage of that and do it sooner the better. <laughs> sooner the better because um, we are slammed here at the shop and we're getting closer and closer to the deadlines to ship stuff. If you have any, want to, any kind of custom work, set up strap buttons, uh, install of uh, pickups. I think actually tomorrow's the last day to order that stuff without doing the rush service if you need it in time for Christmas. And then the last day to ship UPS ground is next week, like next Wednesday or Thursday. So get your orders in um, because we are slammed. UPS is slammed. USPS is slammed. Everyone's slammed. We want to make sure you get those gifts out to you in time. So, all right, great to see everybody. I want to give a shout out real quick to our VIPs here and our platinum members. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Mike, I'm glad Mike's got his camera working again. So it looks like he got it under control now. Uh, Sandy, Cindy, Mark, uh, Herb, Nikki, Richard, Donna, Randall, Randall, Wayne, Kempe, Barry, Smith, Patty, and Natalie, of course, is here. Will is here. Will, I, meant, I got to call you today, Will, so we can figure out your order. Douglas, Terry, uh, Elaine. Good to see you, Elaine. No, no, not you, Elaine. Not Elaine and Rachel. Another Elaine. Another. Yulia's here. Well, she was here yesterday. I don't think she had a camera on. So Yulia's good to see you. Yulia won one of our challenges recently. Patty, Jackie. I talked to Jackie last night. It's good to see you, Jackie. Chad uh, is here as well. Uh, Dennis, good to see you, Dennis. All right, we got a lot today. Jen, Jen is here, Brenda, Margo, Lori, Dolores, Brian, and then a few people on uh, audio. So great, great to see everybody here. My team is here, Mari and Alex. I want to give a shout out to them uh, as well for all the help that they, they do. And tomorrow, tomorrow we got um, a new song for you coming out. We've released two songs so far. We've done Rocking Around a Christmas Tree, and we've done Here Comes Snow. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Tomorrow we're doing a new song. I don't even know which one. You'll have to tell me. And then uh, we have a guest on Friday. We have a guest on Saturday as well. Um, and just so you know, in order to be entered to win one of the eight guitars, I want you to post at least one video of yourself playing. Now, check this out. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Margo, the Christmas song is coming. But I want you to post at least one video of yourself playing a Christmas song over on the Uclick the Pros forum. Okay? It doesn't have to be, and I'm changing the rules a little bit. It doesn't necessarily have to be from this year's songs because I know I chose some pretty hard songs. I would like it to be. Okay. Hint, hint. I would like it to be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. You can do it really any Christmas song. We did a whole bunch of Christmas songs last year as well or this year. So your, your choice, but get a Christmas song posted up at the, you collect the pros forum. That's totally free to do it. You can post Jackie post away. You know how we like, I like them. I like more videos. Matter of fact, if you could do all seven of the songs we do, I'm doing this year, do that. But if you can only do, you know, a few, that's fine, but you have to post at least one and okay, make sure you at least post one video. Um, and again, if it's one of your songs, your choice, that's totally fine as well. Um, but give the songs that I'm doing a, a shot because they're great songs, even if they can be a little hard. They're still great songs and they're classic songs. Remember, not every Christmas song is, is three chords. All right. The other exciting news I have for you, and I'm going to bring Natalie on. I'm really excited here to bring Natalie on. Is uh, I'm going to, I just out of nowhere, out of nowhere. Decided to do a Christmas, not sorry, a children's course next week. All right, so I'm going to film a children's course next week. I'm just telling you now. Um, I just thought of it yesterday, even though every, the whole team's been telling me for like two years to do this. I finally got inspired. So um, I was supposed to go out of town next week, and I had to cancel that, and I was kind of bummed. But I figured, hey, I can't go out of town, do something productive while I'm in town. So, uh, yeah, the children's songs, Herb, is like kids, like beginning kids. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to use a different tuning for the uke, the open tuning, which uh, you can tune. You can tune this string to, to G, which will give you a just a regular um, C major chord when you do that. So I think that's going to be fun. And we're going to be singing and stuff. Here, the wheels on the bus go round and round and all that kind of stuff as well. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, <laughs> We're going to bring on Natalie here. So Natalie Gilman's here. Uh, 
we got some links we're going to share with you and how you can connect with with natalie afterward this with her her website where she has um her music she has some merchandise and she even sells handwritten song lyrics up there as well uh she's gonna do a little playing for us and i'm excited to learn a little bit about her if you have any questions for natalie when we're talking throw it in the chat and then again, all the VIPs stick around here at the end and we'll have a, a Q&A with her. So, um, all right, youcollectopros.com slash Christmas. So are you ready, Natalie? All right, awesome. All right, so let me, I'm gonna make you a co-host here first. All right, there it is, I'm gonna unpin myself. And then I am going to unmute you or ask you to unmute yourself. All right, are we live, Natalie? I'm here, am I unmuted? I yes. I'm good. I can hear you. Awesome. How are you? Great. Oh, I'm so good. It's great to see the new Bob Marley guitar. I, I just tuned up. I have a guild here in, in uh, Dad Gad, and I was like, well, I guess I'll make sure that's in tune. <laughs> Some six string ukuleles around here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, this is really exciting. And I've been watching some of what, uh, what's gone, gone on through the extravaganza. It's, it's inspiring. Um, it's it's you like the pros and you for and with the pros because I I was getting a lot of information from everyone so yeah this is awesome honored awesome. yeah I'm glad I'm glad of that um so I, I want to learn a little bit about you and I've been listening to some of your music and stuff tell me where are you located at right now what city yeah. are you in um I'm in Ojai California which is like near Santa Barbara but I'm originally from New York City um yeah. Made okay. my way here by way of LA. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a LA LA born, uh, and then out of LA to San Diego, and then back to LA for 20 years. As I, I spent uh, 20 years as a studio musician in LA, and then back to San Diego here. So um, nice. We have a lot of people here in California, and some from LA. And Will used to live up in this area too, and uh, so so cool. So so now, tell us a little bit about your. Uh, a little bit about yourself, your musical journey sure. um, and what you do and, and what your goals are. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I always loved music. I grew up, my, my dad's a classical musician, a uh, violinist, and I studied violin growing up, hated it, <laughs> studied piano growing up, also did not like it, but I knew I wanted to sing. I knew I, I loved music. I just hadn't really found my instrument. Um, and when I picked up a guitar at 16, which was two years ago now, that was like 20 years ago now, I uh, just felt like it was an extension of my body. And so I started to, to play guitar uh, pretty soon afterwards, started busking in the subways um, and went to college, studied opera. But as I graduated, I started doing more of the singer songwriter thing. And um, I still busk in the subways to this day, if you consider this day, March 10th or 11th of 2020. <laughs> when the world shut down and I haven't really been back since, but, uh, yeah, I still busk. And I've also done like bigger things like opening for Bon Jovi at arenas and singing with Wyclef and opening for him and Dave Mason and all, all different kinds of people in all different kinds of places. And I've toured all over the U S and Europe and UK and, um, yeah. And I, and as far as instrumentally, what I, what I love, I, um, Ukulele was a kind of interesting instrument for me. I've been thinking about it in, in getting into our conversation today because my husband actually bought me my first ukulele like two or three weeks after we started dating. And so it was like, no pressure. Here's an instrument. And Ron Hargrave, I don't know if you guys know who Ron Hargrave is. He's a fantastic ukulele player in Ventura County. Um, he's in his late eighties now. Um, and, and, amazing amazing musician that you should all check out he has a couple of records virtuoso he used to play for jerry lee lewis um so anyways ron picked the ukulele out and i was like okay no pressure i better write a song on this for for my boyfriend at the time and it was hard for me to get into it i as a new yorker and just through my life like have tended one of my co-writers who's grammy award-winning like said to me once in a co-write he's like i don't think you'll ever write like a purely happy song natalie like just like give up on that um because it's just my sen sensibilities of like always you know having that balance and so um i write on guitar on ukulele um alternate tunings on the guitar and like uh even frankly like alternate tunings on the ukulele outside of 
um, you know, I haven't really thought about experimenting with that much, but all of things open up new tonalities that for me as a songwriter, I can like drop into. Um, I write on the piano now, I got back to piano. I've been writing on the kalimba. I've been writing, um, I have a charango, I have a mandolin, I have a bass. Like there's always inspiration around you if you, if you kind of um, experiment. And I finally, it took me like a year or two to stop hearing the ukulele as purely happy. Like every minor chord, you know how they say, like I studied music theory and had a lot of music training growing up, but it all sounded just like happiness to me. Um, and it still kind of does even 10 years later, but I actually value that now because I think the songs that I tend to write on the uke or I tend to want to cover on the uke usually have a heavier subject matter or a heavier um, heart string pull and the ukulele balances that. So yeah, I think I use it as like another, I don't know, it's almost like if you're watching a film, like you can't just have like all bad guys, <laughs> you need a good guy. So yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I totally understand what you're saying. I and I agree with you. I was gonna say that too with the the minor chords. I still think I still don't think minor chords even sound that minor on. They really don't. Like they just like it sounds so happy. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And, uh, and I, and I think that's, you know, one, and, and we have mainly ukulele players here, although a lot of, a lot of our members do dabble in other instruments like guitar, um, or a guitar lele or something as well. Um, and, and, and a lot of them have musical experience and different things as well. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think that's one thing that attracts people to the, the ukulele is that, that sound, a happy sound, you know, besides yeah. just the, the overall size and the four strings, which makes it a little bit easier to play than a guitar. Um, but it is a, you know, it is a fun sounding uh, uh, instrument. Yeah, I love covering a lot of um, Johnny Cash. Um, I'm planning on doing a Radiohead cover ZP, all ukulele and Creep has been a signature song, which is kind of very, very cliche, but um, I have a personal connection to that song, but yeah, it just, it pulls out a different, it creates space. Like, and, and this is, might be too like meta or something for anyone, but if anyone studied classical music, like you have like Mozart who leaves a lot of space in his arias and that space allows space for the vocalist to put all the lyrics and, and there's a balance there versus if it's like filled with, you know, and not just, a guitar and the the warmth and the fullness of you know a d55 or um you know a band playing with you like there's a i don't know yeah i mean it's i'm kind of getting into like musical director talk which like is not a world i know much about i was just watching something yesterday and i was like wow who like figures that out that okay i'm gonna do this crazy riff at the end when we think the song is done um yeah i mean it's it's an awareness of it as you know, beyond just, okay, am I playing the right notes? Am I like pressing down my finger hard enough and not too hard? And um, all that stuff is part of it. But then when you can learn the rules and then get comfortable with them, you can kind of get into territory where you're, you're painting with it. It's just a color. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, and I think that, you know, it's something we all strive for and it's what, what makes it hard for a lot of people to, um, as they're learning, you know, when they see a, uh, someone like you playing and doing stuff that's, you know, a little bit, well, well, I mean, for example, like if you change up the strum patterns for a song, right? Like, you know, like some, we teach them, we, as a teacher, you might teach somebody one strum pattern and then they play it for the whole song. But then when you see somebody actually performing a song, they may use like a variety of strum patterns or techniques or finger pick, right? And that's, that's that like breaking out of that, you know, that, that what you were talking about, the creativity part of it and expanding past the, um, expanding out past your, your boundaries, which is, you know, what, what music really starts becoming more music. Yeah. And I, as you were speaking, it reminded me of like, I do have limitations as a player. Like I'm not, I would consider myself a beginner intermediate player. I mean, I just, I've seen people who are amazing. You're like, okay, <laughs> I don't practice enough to ever be that good. Like, and I, to be honest, I've, I've seen that and I'm like, I don't 
even want to be that good because that's not my goal. My goal is to use it as a songwriter. And then there's things that I have to practice and I'm going, okay, I really need to like learn. There's little parts. There's like a Britney Spears song I was doing for a while. I think it was, wait. Anyway, so that I was like, when I was playing it a lot, I made sure like those little moments were tight, but I mean, I had a show yesterday, for example, and I played, this was a guitar thing. Um, I played a song on the guitar that um, I'm, I'm just not, and I think everyone's like this. Some of my friends who are really fantastic, like finger pickers, um, if you don't practice that that day or the day before, you're not gonna nail it. There's gonna be flubs. And you either have to forgive yourself or you have to know, okay, like I wasn't, even though you played it, like I just had played the same song I played yesterday. And I was like, oh, there's, that's a little rough. Um, but I played it like three days beforehand and it was perfect. <laughs> so I was like, dang. Um, and there's a, there's a famous pianist, I think, who says like, if I don't practice for a day, I know. If I don't practice for two days, my wife knows. If I don't practice for three days, the world knows. Yeah. And thanks, Margo. Yeah. It's, it's not like, I was thinking about it as I was falling asleep because I was a little bit beating myself up about this. And I heard Victoria speaking to, you know, you can't, you can't expect perfection in, in this journey. Like it's getting different skills. And then when you go back to songs, like I played a Jack Johnson, it was like a cover song gig that I kind of had yesterday, like a mix of covers and originals. And I played a Jack Johnson song and he's all, oh, you didn't do the part where you hit the guitar. And I was like, there's a part where you hit the guitar. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I learned that song, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. Like, I don't even know how th that part. So, you know, I think just know where you are in your journey and, and going from there. And for me, like learning songs has always been a great way to learn new chords. You were saying in the intro about all these uh, more difficult Christmas songs and yeah, it's, you just keep picking up little skills. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and I like what you said about, you know, the, the song, the songs become your own over time, you know, so like you said, you might have learned a song 15 years ago, and you might have listened to the, the actual recording back then. And now because you've played it so many times over the years, right, you've, you've, without even knowing, you've added your own, whatever, strong pattern, maybe you've been changed some lyrics a little bit, you're changing raising of the melody yeah. a little bit and you don't to, to you in your mind you're still thinking this is exactly how the song is and then someone says hey where's the hitting the guitar <laughs> where's the hitting yeah. the guitar part <laughs> yeah and I had that same conversation I played creep yesterday and he came over to me he says what's the word you say and you don't sing loser you sing like sing like something with a w I'm like no I sing loser <laughs> and I was like arguing with him and then I like sang through the chorus really quick and I was like oh yeah, I sing weirdo. <laughs> I was like, is that not the lyric? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, and, and maybe there was a recording that I heard where that's how it was sung. I mean, cause I know Willie Nelson is pretty, pretty well known for doing that, like constantly changing lyrics over time. I mean, I think a lot of performers, I know I do it with my own songs, even my own songs. I listen back to early recordings and like, that was the strumming pattern. Hmm that's interesting. <laughs> it's not what I do anymore. And sometimes it's for better or worse. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I should bring that phrasing back in the way it's sung or, um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, people didn't really have as much content or as much data as we have to cull of our own journey as we do now. I mean, and even just with posting stuff on the internet, like, yeah, I think a lot of my, my videos from back in the day are still up, which I don't know what to say about that, <laughs> but I've seen someone. I'm like, hmm, okay. I think I have a, I have a quote, you know, a lot of, a lot of the challenges we do here and, and whether it's a public challenge or for, for the members only. But um, one of the quotes I always tell people is that if you're not a little embarrassed by the, the first video you posted, then you waited too long. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's good. We all, we all have those embarrassing videos. I mean, I still put out embarrassing videos, but we, we still go with them. Um, something you said that I wanted to touch upon real quick. Uh, actually, I wanted to touch upon the offer thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for, for now. Um, is especially you as a songwriter and you say how um, sometimes you'll change your rhythm 
or something in a song. And I think that's why, and I don't know if you notice this, but as a songwriter to record in some form, even if it's like turning on your iPhone or, or whatever, record some form of that as that first inspiration of the song that comes out. So you have it because what ends up happening, at least for me, and let me know if it happens to you, you end up changing it even within five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And it, it, it's still cool, but it might lose that original inspiration that you got. So having that very first, whatever, few takes, five minutes of recording, you can go back and then go, oh, yeah, that's how this, the rhythm and the, the lyrics and the melody all flow together. Yeah, there's some gold to mine from that very, very initial spark of inspiration. So I try to always capture that. And, and for me, even finishing a song, if I don't finish it usually within the first day, and then it, it's like a, I don't know what the term is. There's like a curve of diminishing returns where if I don't get it done in the first day, then two, then three, I need to co-write it. And I, and that's when it's great. Cause you have, you know, a, a lot of, you have a sounding board of, Hey, what should we do with this? And the song I was going to play, the original song I was going to play today is a co-written um, song. And we actually didn't start like a lot of times you bring in something that's a little verse or a chorus or a snippet of an idea and her and I just talked and we, we got an idea from that conversation, but yeah, it's just a great way to, to push yourself. I know there's a lot of ukulele clubs and if someone's interested in writing, they could always, yeah. you know, but scared to do it, ask, ask your friend in your ukulele group and go for it. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Well, why don't we, this might be a great spot to you uh, play one of the, one of the songs here and whatever you yeah. want for us. I was and- going to wait on this one. Cause it's, a bit sad, sad, but I'll play this one. This is, um, since I was just mentioning it, I wrote this with um, Jessica Lee Graves and it's called The Lights Upstairs. Um, and it's a song I wrote for my mom who at the time was at the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. Um, and again, what I was speaking of, like you, you're kind of taking this like very, very heavy subject and balancing it with the lightness of the ukulele and um, yeah, and so I think we captured that in this one. It came out in 2019 with a gorgeous music video. And uh, here it is. I found the eggs next to the ice cream. I found the cheese next to the bread. The milk is in the pantry. The crackers get in walls. Things are getting scrambled in your head. Darling, nobody cares if the lights are not upstairs. If the words don't come so easy after a while. Call me another man. It don't cause me any pain. This is how it goes. Your mind is not on trial. You can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in time. But they're still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the lines. I called you up to supper. And you show up for lunch Looking mighty sweet In your pearls and Sunday best the Time I guess it doesn't matter much Darling, nobody cares If the lights aren't on upstairs If the words don't come so easy after a while call me another name it don't cause me any pain this is how it goes your mind is not on trial you can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in town but still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the line Think it's so much worse than it is. Baby, you ain't lost all that you had. And I'll give you space to feel where you are. 
there's still good days and the bad ones ain't that bad no 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 nobody cares if the lights aren't on upstairs if the words don't come so easy after a while call me another name it don't cause me any pain this is how it goes your mind is not on track you can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in time but the still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the lines you can lose all of the memories you make with me my dear but there's still in my heart and the bluebirds in my Oh, wow. Beautiful. Amazing. And, and, and thank you for, I mean, it's the very personal, uh, personal song. So we, we, uh, we appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. Thanks you guys. Thanks for all the nice comments. Um, I just have a lot of things going on in my mind. So what I wanted to talk to about here is your voice. Um, you got a beautiful voice. Mm. Um, so we, a lot, I mean, a lot of people here sing, play and sing, yeah. um, but Besides your playing, your ukulele, your guitar playing, your songwriting, what do you do or what have you done? You had mentioned you're an op trained opera singer, which is awesome. Um, what do you do for your voice even to this day as far as warm up, vocal exercises, or what did you do, you know, to get uh, to, to help build the strength of your voice? Um, I have a lot to say on that. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to see. Let's see. Okay. I still take voice lessons. Um, I haven't for the last month because I've been producing an ind independent feature film for my husband. So my voice, I knew about a week or two ago, I was like, I have so many shows coming up and I'm out of shape and I've been singing a little bit, but just as you're practicing, your voice is a very small muscle. It's about, I think as wide as a, as a nickel and as thin as a dime, they, they say that, you know, oh, you have your vocal cords and cords is not a good, um, analogy of it they're more like vocal folds they're kind of it's like you know the two muscles that are over your esophagus or at the top of your esophagus and and so they vibrate if you guys know like they're vibrating and getting tense and looser like 440 times a second when you're singing a like all the if you've ever seen your little tuner and it has those that little dial that's what your vocal cords are doing and so they have to be so you're you're an athlete i mean i and i know people disagree with me, but vocalists, really great vocalists are athletes. And your voice is the first thing to show when you're not rested or stressed out or upset about something. Um, it all, it's all here. So <laughs> I do a lot. Um, I try to drink a lot of water and not just on the day that I'm performing, but in the days leading up to my performance. Um, and then I think learning what works for you is really important. Um, as we both take sips of water. I think learning what works for you is really important. Um, so for me, like tea with lemon was actually something that didn't really work for me. It really would dry out my mouth and then subsequently my throat. Um, but the opposite of that, like the throat coat tea with honey and all kinds of stuff, like isn't necessarily good either. There's a, there's a balance for me. Um, I mean, it's learning, you can get really meta and this, there's this TMI, but there's a certain time of the month where my voice doesn't hit certain high notes. Like my voice lowers and, um, your body, you know, your hormones can affect like how your vo voice is, is doing. And I don't know if men have that at all, but that's something as a woman that I've had to navigate and go, okay, this is the time when I don't sing that song. Or if I do, it's not with as much ease and fluidity. Um, I've learned not to speak on my car when I'm, you know, driving, hours and hours back and forth to gigs. It's really not, uh, not a good use of my vocal dollars as I like to call them. I, I did go to speech therapy 
couple of years ago, I was noticing an issue with the fluidity of my higher register and my recovery time and stuff. And so I saw an ENT an ear, nose and throat doctor. And the first one I saw said, oh, you might have some acid reflux. There's some bricking, but there's nothing wrong with you. And I was like, mm, no, there's something wrong with me. And I went and saw a doctor at UCLA and he said, there's the start of vocal nodules. So that's what I was feeling. And so I did some speech therapy and I still have issues with this where I speak till the end of my breath and I don't take enough catch up pauses and breaths. I speak like a singer using the, all of her air. <laughs> so my singing has really screwed up my, my speaking, which then has come back around. So it's, I mean, it's amazing how I, I try to really, I do warm ups before I sing. I, your voice kind of like, you know how when you're sleeping, all of your eyes wake up puffy and all that stuff for sometimes like you're singing in church or you're singing some early gigs. Like you have to wake up and all that needs to drain out for at least two hours before you're going to find, you know, a natural, it's going to feel correct. Um, usually the first two hours of the day um, are harder to sing. And yeah, there's a lot of things. I mean, just warm ups, having a good going, going to a vocal coach and learning, you know, if you're straining and how to, but I, I even, when I used to teach how to sing, I mean, part of it's just stretching, like getting all of your, it's all connected. Your, your tension in your neck, which as a guitar player, I've was taking some guitar lessons with a friend of mine a couple of years ago. And he was like, all right, you've got too much energy in your right strumming hand. You got to loosen up that tension in your shoulder because it's just carrying into your vocal cords. And he's right. And I still do. It's, and I try not to put talking about progress. One of the things my teacher says is like, just what, what can we do to make it 1% easier, 5% easier? Um, and it's the same with the same as your vocals. You know, how, how much air do you really need? Do you need to blast it out? Or can you, you know, give it a sustained amount of air? Like when I'm holding notes forever, like um, I'm not really using that much air. That's how I'm able to do it. It's not that my lung capacity is like that different from the average person, but it is, it's a skill. It's a muscle. It's just like going to the gym. Um, and what I was going to say about the analogy is like, you know, how hard do you need to press to get a clear tone, which is something nobody explained to me <laughs> in all the lessons I took on guitar. And, uh, I never have taken private ukulele lessons, but I was like, how did nobody tell me that? And I just learned that a couple of years ago. I was like, Oh, okay. Let's, let's try to not exude extra effort because it all gets put somewhere as tension yeah yeah no and you're right I mean I've noticed um like you were even saying about the ukulele pressing down your voice too I mean sometimes you can when our tendency as a singer to try to hit a high note is to force it more rather than sometimes it's more of a relaxed you got to mm -hmm. relax it a little bit more and your voice can actually hit the higher notes with less straining yeah yeah. So, uh, so Jackie, that's a great question. Maybe we'll do a little bit of that uh, on the private Q&A. We'll talk about some vocal, vocal tips for, for everything. Um, but since we're talking about singing, and I did want to get back to this. So you had mentioned that you, were, uh, you studied opera uh, in college, uh, and then you, you kind of switched more to the, the singer-songwriter um, stuff. But obviously, you can hear in your voice, uh, you've got a, a great range in your voice. So uh, what is it about like opera that you liked and that would drew to you, mm -hmm. you know, even studying it the know, fancy dresses problems. and costumes no. <laughs> I really I mean that was a big part of it when I was when I was uh I mean so I grew up in my parents were musical and put me in guitar I'm sorry uh violin and then piano when I was like four and five years old and I hated it and I'm saying that but it wasn't until I was about eight which felt like a lifetime because it had been <laughs> that I begged for voice lessons and finally got them and pretty much spent them just singing Disney songs with my coach um, and belting out just around the river bend and a whole new world and all of my favorite Disney songs. Um, and then opera kind of, it, I had, I went from her to like a very classical focused teacher and we did a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan. And um, I don't know, I mean, that, those were the performance opportunities available to, for kids, you know, it was like musicals and, and then opera, 
I'm not sure. I think, I think that's what my mom was kind of listening to around our house was, you know, like our local NPR station. Um, and then when I went to high school, I went to the, the fame high school, the high school of performing arts and our curriculum in schools is very classical based. Um, and so even before then, but by the time I got to that high school, that was where I finally thought of pop music as like, I mean, my pop music exposure was Liza Minnelli and Madonna. Like I didn't have, I didn't know who the Beatles were. Um, yeah. So I, I got to high school and it was, there was still like a magical choir and a senior chorus that did all like Vivaldi and Handel and whatever. And so, um, then there was also a gospel choir that it started giving me more exposure to different things. And then I joined a group called um, New Music Singers and I saw people my age writing music, but it wasn't in that class that I wrote music. It was just that I got the idea that I could and they were actually writing um, on the guitar. And so that's what I was like, oh, I need to get a guitar. Um, but I had already applied to college at that point. I took that class my senior year and I had already applied to college and um, and I had sung everything I auditioned for, like the performance opportunities were all classical based. And so I sang at Carnegie Hall a couple of times as a soloist with different choirs and got to sing opera. And so, I don't know. And then, but then when I went to college, it very quickly changed and I realized it wasn't, it wasn't as creative as I wanted. Um, I think when you're starting, people really encourage that creativity. And then there's a like, long desert of time where they're like no we think it was sung like this 250 years ago so you must sing it the exact same way and I'm like but there's no recordings and I literally had a fight with my teacher about a melisma at the end of some phrase and I think it was in a Vivaldi song and she's like um this isn't you know this isn't appropriate to the time period and I was like um if Vivaldi heard my voice he would be really happy I was doing it this way <laughs> like I was I was so frustrated and so like I wanted to, you know, if I was like, why can't I show off my voice here? I already learned all the diction. I mean, there's so much that goes into opera that is so meticulous that is just soul draining. I really respect opera singers because it's, it's a, they are, they are even more athletes than, um, you know, some pop singers and such. Cause it's, it's everything from learning languages. I mean, I sang in so many, I had to learn all these different languages and yeah. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. What is your favorite opera? What is your favorite opera? Um, someone asked me the same question last night, I, you know, probably Don Giovanni. Um, and that's the one I probably sang the most arias from, but I don't really have a favorite opera. I studied opera in um, Austria for a while and I loved, they were much more creative. And my coaches over there during that brief semester were very encouraging and it gave me enough juice to keep and make my way through the next two years of school and get a degree because I was really close to dropping out I did drop out and then my mom was a teacher and she was like um yeah you got to go back to school <laughs> um so yeah I think Don Giovanni and I can't remember if that was one of the ones I saw in Salzburg but they you know I had seen the one thing that was amazing about being at the high school performing arts in New York City is that so many of our former instrumentalists in that instrumental program were playing for the Metropolitan Opera and they gifted their tickets to the alumni association who would just give them to the students. And so we would get like a couple front row seats to the Metropolitan Opera. And actually Hensel and Gretel was a really great, I mean, I think it's fun when you know the story. Um, and I think it's fun when there's creativity, but so the Met was amazing. I mean, and that was, that was just awesome. And I got to internship there in high school and um that was really neat and I also interned and sang at the uh New York City Opera which was right next door in Lincoln Center but um yeah it was it was really in Salzburg that they're just more creative so sorry that was a very long-winded yeah, yeah yeah no it's good <laughs> yeah um so I, I was watching one of your videos that you posted recently it was a cover of a, a Carol King uh song so I imagine she was a big influence on on you. Um, I love her. I can't why don't we, uh, just, just, why don't we get to the next song that you were going to Sure. Play? Well, um, I wanted to play a Christmas song. Okay. Um, this is, has anyone covered Silent Night yet? 
Um, I think we did that one last year in our extravaganza, so you're good. No, no one, no one's all right, good. Well, I'm gonna sing I sprechen Sie Deutsch, so I'm gonna sing the original German lyrics. Um, um, at, at some point. <laughs> clapping and put a lot of great great uh chats in there so um man, so i think that's a great a note to uh kind of end the the youtube stream and then if you don't mind sticking around here natalie and then we'll have a a few questions here with the okay. vip and the platinum members but if you want to uh maybe give a final word to the uh, everyone here watching on youtube oh thanks for being here and good good luck in your ukulele journeys i'm so excited for you all i mean i think um it's whenever someone tells me they love music and they want to start ukulele is usually what I tell them to pick up. And so it's a great instrument to, to, to you know, just there's so many songs open to you and um, every new chord you learn opens new possibilities. And I thought of a Christmas song without, four, without three chords, but I think it has five. It's River by Joni Mitchell. Uh, yeah, it's another one you guys can add to the mix if you haven't yet. But yeah, there's so much, um, 
music is such a great, great thing to help you with so many, it's, it's healthy. It's, it's wonderful. So I'm glad you guys are on this journey and, and grateful to be a tiny little part of it. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. So, all right. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, they just hang tight for just a couple of minutes. Let me wrap up the YouTube thing and then we will be back here on, on this Q&A. So, all right. So, all right, everybody. So thank you uh, all for being here. I know, uh, Everyone, including myself, blown away by uh, Natalie's talent, uh, singer, ukulele player, ukulele player, excuse me, artist. Um, and so we put some of her, uh, all her links in the chat from before. So make sure you find, check her out on Spotify, check her out on Instagram. She got a, her website as well. Um, we'll put those in. And then everybody here on YouTube, um, continue. We're, we're continuing on tomorrow with, with, uh, a new tutorial that we'll be releasing. No live tomorrow, it's Thursday, um, but we'll have a song tutorial. And then don't forget the specials in honor of Cordoba and Natalie today. We got a few things, right? We got 20% off all Cordoba ukuleles and guitars at the store, 10% off all the Guild guitars that we have. And then over on our, our website, ukulelecompose.com, the instructional site we're doing just today. And again, this is just in honor of Natalie, 50% off all the courses so go check those out. We got over 20 courses up there for uh, ukulele, baritone, guitar, levy, all that stuff. So ukulelepros.com slash extravaganza uh, for that. Uh, and everything, I think the code is extravaganza, but I think, yeah, code is extravaganza. Get 50% off any of our courses that are over there. So, um, all right, you all, you're awesome. Thank you. We had a great turnout here on YouTube. We're going to pop over to the, uh, the Zoom call and just have a little session. If you want, interested in becoming a VIP or a platinum member, uh, you can do that. You click the pros.com slash Christmas. And uh, don't forget, start getting your songs ready. You got to put them up at the forum to have a chance to win one of the eight ukuleles that we have. So, all right, take care. Have a good one. I'm going to end the stream here. Thank you all again for your time and we'll see you later. All right, take care. All right, so we are back. Let me, uh,